What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you how I recorded a massive guitar sound with this little amplifier. In our last video, we recorded some guitars that sounded great through a big orange half stack. You can check that uh, video back in the link in the description as well as the card above. Let's take a listen to a clip of the song. Les Paul. Ooh. All right, so let's get this bad boy mic'd up. Okay, so today I'm going to be miking up this 8-inch orange speaker cabinet. It's really small. It's got a closed back with plate with this uh, micro dark orange head playing through it. Um, this thing is pretty cool. It's got one tube in it, you can kind of see, but it's a hybrid, like solid state tube amp. Uh, and then, yeah, let's talk about mics next. All right, so let's talk about mic setup now. So we're gonna be going with the two mics set up today. Again, the tried and true SM57 is gonna be close to the speaker. And then about four feet back, I'm gonna use this neat uh, worker bee. It's a little bit different than the king bee that I used in the last video. Uh, this one's a medium diaphragm condenser. Uh, usually. Whenever I like to mic electric guitars, I will um, have a close mic and then about six feet back a uh, condenser mic to capture you know, the sound of the amp in the room and how the room interacts with it. In this case, because it's such a small speaker, uh, just eight inches, I'm gonna use this medium diaphragm so it captures less of the room and kind of more focus towards in towards the speaker. And then again, a little bit closer just because I don't think the eight inch speaker is gonna push the sound uh, as hard as like a 12 inch speaker would too. So let's see how that sounds out. All right, so here's what we got. There's our SM57 kind of pointed towards the center of the speaker, angled a little bit. And then back here, I have the neat worker B. Yeah, we'll put it a little bit closer than that, about four feet from the amp to capture the, uh, the sound of how it's interacting with the room and everything. So let's check out how that sounds. All right, so now that we got our mic set up, let's take a listen to how this guitar is gonna sound. All right, so right now I have the uh, gu guitar amp here plugged in and it's um, just go guitar going straight into the amp, nothing else. Um, let's listen to the, the bridge pickup with this now. So here's the riff that's gonna be featured. <laughs> just like that with this, uh, the bridge pickup here. And then I went around again and I wanted to record a second guitar. So the second time I recorded the guitar, I put it to the rhythm pickup here just to give it a different sound to blend the two together. Um, and then here's an example of what that sounds like. Additionally, what I used is I changed the shape on the, um, the amplifier here and I changed the shape. I rolled it down to about maybe nine o'clock to give it a different, uh, just to give it a different dynamic range. So let's hear how that sounds now. Great, so now that you've heard of that, um, imagine those two blended together. Uh, and I'm going to show you all this here in the recording. But basically what I did was I took the treble sound and blended it with the rhythm sound and then panned each guitar to one side, like to the right and to the left. And then when you did that, you had that larger harmonic range. Additionally, uh, when I was recording this, I decided to stack a few more guitars on it too. So next I'm gonna show you how I use this rat pedal to do that. And the reason why I chose this rat pedal is because it has this filter control on it. 
Now the filter, it kind of works a little bit like a wah, but just less of a range, more fine-tuned. But let's take a listen to how that sounds. So I'm going to put it back on the rhythm on the treble pickup. That's with the pedal, and here's without. So right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the shape um, on the amp to about maybe 2 o'clock, and then we're going to try that again. guitars together. And I forgot I wanted to show you one other cool thing that I used on this track. In this box here, I have an Evo. And if you've ever seen an Evo before, this is what they look like. Um, basically what it is, it's like a magnet in there or something, but uh, when you turn it on, it does some cool things with the string. So let's hear how that sounds. So I'm going to hover it over the string that I have here, about the, just over the pickup. of the track was I recorded a few different um, octaves and then the fifth we recorded them all together and then panned them to the right to the left to, to get a different uh, like a just just a cool little intro to go with it um, and you'll hear them on the track too we'll play that next amplifiers, uh, this micro dark, they're marketed towards the audience that likes to play like that heavier sound and obviously as you can hear it does that like 90s hard rock grunge rock really well. However, this amp does clean up pretty well too and I do find myself using it for different applications as well. So. <laughs> Now I'd be doing you all a disservice if we didn't try plugging in this little tiny amp through the massive 412 cabinet. So let's listen to how that sounds right now. So it gets pretty loud through this 412 cabinet here. Um, I'm going to try boosting up the gain a little bit to make it sound even more heavy. And then this time I'm going to push the rhythm pickup. <laughs> Sounds pretty great to me. Um, down here I have the rap pedal, so I'm going to kick that on and let's uh, give it a little bit more grit. <laughs> This thing really crushes it with that um, big cabinet here. Um, here's that Evo I was showing you guys earlier. Sounds pretty cool. 
So yeah, I got my orange baby amp up here because I thought it'd be cool to have one to mess around with in the studio. And obviously, as you can hear, it sounds pretty pretty sweet with that. But then it doubles as a, like a backup when I'm playing live and stuff because I have this orange AD30 that I, you know, usually play with when I'm playing out live, you know, in town here in Nashville or on the road or whatever. And that's easy to bring just to throw in the glove box to have as a backup just in case, you know, this blows out. Um, you know, because when you're working with tube amps, they are a little bit finicky. This one, it does have a tube in it, I believe, but it's also like a hybrid with solid state. I don't know. They're pretty great from this video. And I'm sure you could check out a bunch of more videos online, but I'm done talking about that now. All right, so let's take a listen to how the track turned out. This. This is the Ebo. But anyway, let's listen to how those sound first. Just the harmonic um pieces here that we recorded with the Evo. So I'm just going to solo these tracks. Whoops, hit S. And hear how that sounds. So that's the Evo tracks and uh let's hit the let's just let's just listen to the track now. So here it goes. <laughs> So yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I should mention here that uh, I didn't mention it all in this video, but uh, the bass guitar, I just plugged it into the um, channel strip here. That's this guy, this channel strip. And then I use this uh, Ampeg uh, Universal Audio plugin. Um, I have it through the one, the, the 10 and the 115 cabinet. It sounds pretty heavy. Let's take a listen to that real quick. So yeah, it sounds pretty great. Uh, as you can see, this uh, track is a work in progress. By the time I get this video done, I think I should have the song posted so you can hear for reference. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a guitar solo to it too. And I'm thinking about putting words on it too, like lyrics. Let me know in the comments if you think if I should leave this as an instrumental or if I should um, create uh, lyrics and a melody. I wanted to talk a little bit about this rat. This pedal needs no introduction. It's just the classic, probably the most notorious distortion pedal that was ever made. I like to use this one a lot when I'm stacking guitars in the studio. Um, and then also I do use this on my live rig whenever I am playing shows during this time with the uh, virus and everything. Obviously no one's playing any shows, so it's living in the studio on the shelf. And one last thing I wanted to mention, I ended up going with the Rat pedal, but I also decided to use my Wah pedal. I just love the sound of a cocked Wah. Uh, and then here's what it sounds like. That was just all the guitars. I just kind of cascaded them and brought them in one by one. But yeah, the sound of the um, the wah pedal with the guitar just it, it just provides su such a different dynamic range to it, and I just love blending that in with the other guitars. And again, as you can see here, I have them panned like differently um, in different ways to just to get that nice full stereo image for the uh, track. So, all right, so that's a wrap for today. Thanks for sticking around and checking out the whole video. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you want to have more content like this. I'm always making music, and if you guys want, I can make it more tailored to you. So let me know what you want to see and hear. Hopefully by the time I have this video posted, I'll have the whole song complete so you can listen to the final product with everything and how it sounds. And remember, all the guitars I used in the track were from this 8-inch speaker and this orange Micro Dark Terror. I didn't use anything else. Thanks again for watching, and make sure to check back next week for another awesome video. All right, so it sounded so good. I wanted to just show you guys a little bit more of how awesome this sounds. This is called XC Eliminator. <laughs>